Hello and welcome, it's Bashir Fadl. Thank you so much for joining as we start this beautiful journey into security and cybersecurity. Today, specifically, we're going to start the course CompTIA Security Plus SY0601, the 601 exam. Uh, question is, why should I study for this? Or why should I say study security or cybersecurity? Number one, there's a lot of jobs in the cybersecurity field and they're just getting more and more. All you have to do is go to LinkedIn, Dice.com, Indeed.com, Monster.com, and search for jobs, and you'll find thousands of cybersecurity jobs. Number two, the pay. The pay is very good. Some of they just, you know, started working in security, probably makes sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. If you have a few years of experience and certifications, then you're probably making over ninety, a hundred thousand. I know a few people that are making one hundred and seventy, one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year salary. Some people do the contract and consulting work three to six months that are making over a hundred dollars an hour. So there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of pay future wise as well as you look into it. Okay, well now I'm excited to get my certification. What am I going to learn as I study the course? There's five different sections. The first section is what we call attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. Twenty four percent of the test goes into that. So it's very important to note, it's probably the, the, the second section or almost equal to the uh, other section, but 24% goes into attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. What does that mean? It basically means when you work at a company as a security or cybersecurity expert, you want to catch very quickly, where are we vulnerable? Do we need to upgrade? Do we need to patch? Do we need to install something? Uh, are there certain you know weaknesses? So it, it's a quick thing that we need to find where are we weak? Where have we been attacked? And what different threats are out there? So those are kind of things that are very important to be able to capture. And that's why 24% goes to that. Number two is the architecture and design. Again, IT is not just one system or one software or one application. It's a number of moving parts. You have an Oracle database over here on Linux. You have SQL on Windows and Azure. And you have AWS clouds for this. And you have the financial system. And you have HR and using ServiceNow. And, and so you have all kinds of, of, of systems that are working together. Guess who's in charge of the security? It's you. So the architecture and the design of it is very, very important. That's why 21% off the test goes into that. Number three is the implementation. We have all the theory, we have all the designs, but now we need to implement it. Uh, and, and that's a very important part. That's why the most points, probably the 25% goes into implementation. Number four is the operations and incidents response. On the daily basis, there are tickets of, let's go ahead and freeze or, you know, delete this user or add this user and the right profiles and changes that happens. Uh, we have someone that received an email and, and they found a link, uh, link in there and they clicked on that link, which they shouldn't have. So those are the kind of things that you're always having tickets open and you're running after and, and the fires that you're trying to put off and training that you need to do. So that's called operations and incident uh, response. And that's a good 16%. And then number five is governance, risk and compliance. As a security expert, I think we should upgrade this system that belongs to HR, but HR says, no, you know, we're working with it and we don't have time to shut it off uh, or to, you know, upgrade our patch and stay away off our system. That's why governance is important. We need to have a buyer from every, anywhere from the CEO of the company to the, to the head of HR, the head of marketing, the head of sales, the head of IT. We all need to be on the same page of the priority of, of, of IT, you know, of cybersecurity, security. And that's why governance, risk, and compliance. Compliance also means there's a lot of rules and regulations. The company IT department has its rules and regulations and policies. Cities do, states do, countries do, even continents do. If you're doing business in Europe, for example, there's something called GDPR. It's a standard of security that you need to comply to. So compliance, risk, and governance is a big part of what we do. And 14% of the test goes into that. Now, during the test, question types. Of course, it's a multiple choice test. But here's something that's very important. Let's say there's 90 questions, and I know I got 70 of them right. There's 20 I'm not sure about. It's better to put an answer, even though you think it might be wrong, than to leave it blank. Because if it's blank, you're not going to get penalized if, if, if you put the wrong answer. However, out of 20, you might get three, four, or five of those right if you just you know filled it up with something. Again, make sure you study hard. Make sure you get them all right. But there's no reason to leave a blank answer. Also, you can flag questions you're not sure about. I'm not sure about this answer. I think I got it right, but I might need to revisit it. So during the test, you can flag questions that you want to go back to and check once you're done with the whole thing. In case you're done early and you have enough time to review it, you know which ones that are flagged, so you can go back to them as well. The main thing to keep, uh, you know, pay attention to is the test itself. So the test is a maximum of uh, 90 minutes. Uh, usually you have about 90 questions and sometimes might be even less than 90 questions. Uh, during that, to pass, you need 83.3%. So you need to get 750 out of 900 points. 
you need to get 750 out of 900 possible points uh again you could take retake hopefully you pass it the first time that's what we're hoping for but if you need to retake it you could take it about 14 days generally after the first time that you've taken it and there's no limit to how many times you could retake the test generally speaking uh the exam expires after three years so every three years you need to kind of retake it make sure you're looking at the right version uh, a few years ago there was a 501 that now got into 601 so if it's still 601 you take 601 if the number changed or whatever that you need to take or retake then you want to make sure you follow that but usually every three years it expires and that's when you to renew it where do i take the test you can take it through pearson view p-e-a-r-s-o-n view v-u-e or uh, you could also take it online in some cases and then finally where do i study the test for we highly recommend kinsey tech because the curriculum that we have the comtia security plus the 601 exam number one you're going to have explanations to the test to the entire subject matter but the number two you also have quizzes at the end of each section if you get the right answer, it tells you that it's the right answer. If you get the wrong answer, it gives you the right answer and an explanation why that is the right answer. And you could retake it as many times as you need until you're comfortable and keep moving to the next section. So it's a very good way to prepare. We highly recommend going through Kinsey Tech. We wish you the best of luck and thank you so much for joining us.